Uh, dear students, now we are going to learn about the formation of oxybolic. In my previous video, you have learned that how meanders are formed. Actually, oxybolic is one of the feature comes out of the uh, meanders. So, meanders used to form oxybolic. Now, why it is called oxybolic? So, the shape of the feature which is formed by the process uh, in the process the shape looks like the bow of a horse and that is why it is been named uh, bow of an ox and that is why it has been named as ox bow leg so here you can see that the river is flowing this is the direction of the flow the river is flowing in that direction it has started taking bands or horse shoe bands in the middle course because of the less gradient and no power in the river that is why it takes turns and in the process what happened that rivers start taking banks which are known as meanders now it also happened that to naturally if the area if the upper course of the region if the upper course gets heavy amount of rainfall or maybe the melting of snow in the summer season that a lot of water is has started flowing into the river the river used to carry water but because of the heavy rainfall in the upper course a lot of water has started draining into the river and it has increased the velocity now suddenly the velocity has increased so what will happen that the river which is flowing in the band type formation in the band type formation because of the heavy flow there are chances that the neck of the meander this is the neck of the meander the neck of the meander can be cut off this is also the neck of the meander this can be cut off or here also there is a neck so there are chances that a river may cut off this portion or a river may cut off this portion or a river may cut off this portion now whichever the part of the meander is going to be cut off that will later on become the oxbow lake now here for example that because of heavy flow in the water the river has cut off the river has this area has been cut off and that now the river has started flowing straight connecting to the another loop of the meander so this loop and this loop both the loops have connected and this middle part of the meander has been cut off now what will happen after the cut off the river also used to deposit a lot of sediment so this area will experience this is the inside part this both the inside parts will experience there is heavy amount of sediment sand silt and clay has been deposited here now because of the deposition what has happened that this portion has been cut off the river is now flowing directly merging into the another loop right so this area has been cut off this portion will have more deposition it has already a lot of sediments were deposited over there and this entire portion has been converted into an oxbow lake now here you see if i remove this portion now what has happened in the oxbow lake formation if i remove this part you can see here that now is it is clearly identifiable how the oxbow lake has been formed so here you can see this has been converted into an oxbow lake okay this has been converted into an oxbow lake so this area will have water that water may dry up in a point of time or there the water may remain over there in the meander because of the uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, this, uh, soil capacity to hold the moisture it may be possible that the uh, this area will convert into a separate uh, lake and the meander has moved away from there meandering has moved away from there and the river is flowing now 
away from this lake right so this has been converted into an oxbow lake okay so oxbow lakes are generally formed by the rivers when there is sudden increase in the flow of the water and the river is already was meandering and then suddenly the flow has been increased so one of the neck has been cut off and that portion has been isolated from the main channel and that isolation part like this this is the isolated part this isolated part has been converted into a lake which is known as oxbow lake right thank you thank you very much